Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are looking at migration path. And the reason I want to go through this stuff is not because they're going to ask questions on the exam, but it's going to help you contextualize a lot of the business use case scenarios because, you know, this isn't like a normal uh, fundamental uh, certification. They just make it a lot harder. So you need that contextual knowledge, okay? So there are four phases of your migration. There's assess, plan, deploy, and optimize. This is going to be text heavy, but we'll work our way through it and you'll leave with some knowledge, okay? So for assess, perform a thorough assessment and discovery of your existing environment in order to understand your app and, and environment inventory, identify app dependencies and requirements, perform total cost of ownership calculations, and establish app benchmarks. We got plans to create the basic cloud infrastructure for your workloads to live in and plan how you will move apps. This planning includes identity management, organization, project structure, networking, sorting your apps, and developing a prioritized migration strategy. We got deploy, so design and implement, execute a deployment process to move your workloads to Google Cloud. You might also have to refine your cloud infrastructure to deal with the needs. Optimize, begin to take advantage of cloud native technologies and capabilities to expand your business uh, potential to things such as performance, scalability, disaster recovery, cost, training, as well as opening the doors to machine learning, AI integrations for your app. So we'll spend more time right now into each of these four phases just to kind of cement this knowledge, okay? Phase one is, is the assessment phase. You gather information about the workloads you want to migrate and their current runtime environment. So you're gonna take an inventory, build a list of your machines, hardware specifications, operating systems, and licenses. You'll have catalog apps, so build a catalog matrix to help you organize apps into categories based on the complexity and risk in moving to Google Cloud. Uh, I, I don't think we show it in here, but the idea is if you want to see it, they have an example in the Google Cloud documentation. Educate your organization about Google Cloud. So train and certify your software and network engineers on how the cloud works and what Google Cloud products use. Maybe you could use this course to do that. <laughs> Experiment and design proof of concepts. So choose a POC and implement it. Uh, calculate the, tost, uh, the total cost of ownership TCO. So compare your costs on Google Cloud with the costs you have today. Use the Google Calculator. Choose which workloads to migrate first. So identify apps with features that make them likely to be first movers. All right. Um, and starting with a less complex app lowers your initial risk because later you can apply your team's new knowledge to har uh, harder migration apps. Phase two. So in the plan phase, you provision and configure the, uh, the cloud infrastructure and services that will support your workloads on Google Cloud. So establish user and service identities. So for Google accounts, an account that usually belongs to an individual user that interacts with Google Cloud. Service accounts, an account that usually belongs to an app or a service rather than a user. Google Groups, a name collection of Google accounts, uh, Google Workspace Domains, a virtual group of all the group accounts that have been created in your organization group workspace accounts. It's good to know what all these things are because you know there is overlap in the course for these, okay? Cloud Identity Domains, these domains are like Google Workspaces, but they don't have access to Google Workspace applications. This is when you just need, and we cover Cloud Identity, but this is just when you need um, access to Google Cloud, but not to, um, you know, the G65 suite, or the, the G Suite, okay? So design your resource uh, organization. So organize your resources using uh, the Google resource hierarchy. Organizations are the root of a resource hierarchy and represent a real organization such as a company. Folders are an additional layer of isolation between projects that can be seen as sub-organizations. Projects are base level organization entities and must be used to access other Google Cloud resources. Hierarchy architectures, we have environment oriented, function oriented, granular access oriented. We cover these uh, in its own section because that's how important it is. This one, super, super important for this course is understanding this stuff. You'll see exam questions uh, around uh, re or resource hierarchies, okay? Define groups and roles for resource access. So set up groups and roles to grant the necessary access to resources. Design your network topology and establish connectivity. So set up the network top topology and connectivity from your existing environment to Google Cloud. This could be via Cloud VPN, peering, so VPC peering, cloud interconnect, okay? And those three, well, at least the two, cloud VPN and cloud interconnect are gonna show up on the exam for phase three. This is the deploy phase. Implement a deployment process and re uh, refine it during the, uh, the migration. So you have fully manual deploys. Let's you uh, quickly experiment with the platform and tools, but it is error prone and often not documented and repeatable. Configuration management tools, 
abbreviated to CM. So configure an environment in an automated, repeatable, controlled way. Uh, run remote commands on VMs that check the state and remediate uh, of an instance to the desired configuration state. You have config, uh, container orchestration. So consider using Kubernetes so you don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure and the deployment logic. So you could use Google Kubernetes Engine for that. Deployment automation. So automate the deployment process by implementing continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline. You have infrastructure as code. Write a script that defines resources to be created or updated in a single deployment action. Share and stand up entire workflows and environments easily. I see tools here is Google Deployment Manager or HashiCorp. Corp, Terraform, and Terraform is just, it's an IAC, but it works across um, all uh, cloud service providers. And it's really important to know all these different type of deploy types uh, at the fundamental levels that can really help you on the exam, okay? Phase four, the optimized phase, start optimizing your target environment. So build and train your team, train your development and operations team to take full advantage of new cloud environments. Monitor everything. Monitoring is the key to ensure that everything in your environment is working as expected. Prometheus, Google Cloud Logging, Google Cloud Monitoring, automate everything. So manual operations are exposed to a high error risk and are also time consuming. Automation leads to cost and time saving uh, savings and reduces risk. So we're looking at Google Cloud Composer, which is using Apache Airflow, SpinMaker, they're not gonna ask those on the exam, uh, codify everything. So by implementing processes such as infrastructure as code, policy as code, uh, make environments fully audible and repeatable, uh, use managed services instead of self-managed ones, uh, Cloud SQL, AutoML, GKE, App Engine, Optimize for performance and scalability. So horizontal scaling, vertical scaling, and you want to reduce the cost. So take advantage of sustained use discounts, SUDs, committed use contracts, uh, which sometimes are committed committed use discounts. So CUD. So don't get too hung up on the word contract there. Flat rate pricing, uh, such as BigQuery, which I think is the only service that does that kind of flat rate pricing. Okay. So there you go.